How often is safety on your mind when you go to class? Every day. Hello, this is Emma Carlson, Assistant Opinion Editor for Viewpoints. Hello, Tigers. This is Keanu Wallace, Assistant Media Editor. This is Marissa Moreno, Assistant News Editor, and... We are the Viewpoints Opinion Podcasting Team here with a second installment on campus safety. We sat down with Riverside City College students to discuss how national gun violence has had an impact on their perception of safety on RCC's campus. Hey everybody, my name is Capri Weekamp. I'm an RCC student. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So the first question I wanted to ask you was, how do you feel about coming to college in the light of recent shootings? So coming to college or four-year universities is a lot different as far as training compared to elementary schools. You know, you have those earthquake drills, you have um, fire drills, fire safety, um, all those things that they kind of incorporate into their structure throughout their day. Um, But when you come to college, you kind of lose that. You don't have your teachers telling you, okay, if there's a fire drill, this is what we're going to do. If there's an earthquake, this is what we're going to do. And now with the school shootings that are going on, I mean, elementary schools and junior highs are doing it where they're incorporating those drills as well. And college kind of is just, you're adults now, so figure it out, which is a little disconcerting to me personally. Have you heard of the recent California Supreme Court decision that reversed the 2015 ruling stating that colleges were not responsible for protecting their students? I did hear a little bit about that in a uh, recent meeting with a lot of the um, uppers in RCC. And um, while I agree that we're all adults and we need to be responsible for ourselves, um, I do believe that there is a a small bit that instructors and the colleges should at least give us the tools so we know what to do, um, what we should expect from our teachers and what our teachers are expecting from us as well. Um, while we're not, you know, in first grade and whatnot, um, we still need to know what to do. It's a different setting. Uh, we haven't had these drills in quite some time. And once you get to high school, they kind of fade out a little bit. So different settings, um, different instructors. And uh, I just think we need the tools and the information on how to handle those kinds of situations. As you were attending the campus safety combos, they were talking about different safety precautions that RCC is taking, including um, installing new locks on the doors. Uh, How do you feel about their response and do you think it's enough? Um, I definitely think um, locking the doors is a great way. A lot of elementary schools and junior highs do have their doors locked at all times, which is great. Um, I think it's going to be a huge transition um, compared to how it is now with students being able to walk in a few minutes late. Um, Now it's going to be locked. And I think that we're going to have to also think about any repercussions of that as as well, as far as... um, You know, if it's locked, are the students going to be able to come in? The teachers are going to have to stop the instruction and unlock the doors. So I think it's a good step. Um, But I also want to just make sure that it's being thought through and how are we going to handle this? And that, again, make sure that the students and the staff are well aware of how it's going to work um, and what to expect from the students as well as the teachers. A recent California Supreme Court decision ruled that public colleges and universities need to protect their students from potential violence in, quote, school-sponsored activities, unquote. Following an incident where a student at University of California, Los Angeles, was attacked by another with a kitchen knife in class, this ruling has created new regulations for colleges to ensure students' safety. As of right now, what is defined as a school-sponsored activity or function remains unclear, but could potentially apply to athletics, off-campus events, and even study abroad. We sat down with RCC student veterans Linda Butler and Gerardo Rodriguez. Hi, my name is uh, Gerardo Rodriguez. I'm an RCC student. I'm also a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Is campus safety something that you think about? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't want anyone ever, ever have to worry about their own safety because, I mean, why are you doing something that could later on probably benefit the world or the you know the country you don't want to have to worry so much about your safety hello my name is linda butler i am the veterans club president i am also a student here at riverside city college i was in the united states army for six years i am a service-connected veteran um and 
just about helping veterans and to connect with the community and other students as well. How often is safety on your mind when you go to class? Every day. Every day, yeah. I mean, I just like watch my surroundings and just different people's reactions and things like that. Since 2000, according to the Washington Post, 58 shootings have occurred on college campuses in America. These shootings have injured over 200 people and have killed over 100 of them. The recent California Supreme Court case is attempting to remedy the amount of violence that occurs on these campuses. Here again are student veterans Linda Butler and Gerardo Rodriguez. Do you think that mental health largely influences violence? Yes, yes. Um, I mainly would say like PTSD or something like that, someone that has PTSD um, or someone that's been in the military, you know, they may... Um, the shootings, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was that's military that's doing it, but different people's mental status is, is causing that, yes. Have you known anyone with PTSD? Yes, I currently have PTSD. Okay. Yes. I see. Um, how do you, how do you reconcile with that? Um, well, being a veteran, they have, um, veteran services for, for the ones of, that, of us that do have PTSD. And PTSD comes in different forms. There's different forms of PTSD. Some It's not just um, personal trauma. I mean, it could be mental or it can be sexual or something like that. So, yes. Um, yeah, I actually do because um, it depends on how you grow up, how people treat you, how um, the support you may or may not get depending on how people treat you is, you know, the way you end up growing to be. Like, you know, everyone's personality is different in, in the world, but it's like that because of the roles that other people playing in your life, either supporting you or putting you down. Most individuals with psychiatric disorders are not violent, according to Harvard Medical School. While some mentally ill individuals may be violent, this is not true for the majority. However, many media outlets and gun rights activists incorrectly yet routinely link the two. With school shootings happening frequently in America, such as the Santa Fe school shooting that occurred on May 18th, an increased awareness of gun violence on school campuses has been controversial. Passionate supporters for common sense gun control have come together to fight gun violence in the recent National March for Our Lives. Here are our students, Capri Weekamp and Gerardo Rodriguez speaking. Um, how often do you think about gun violence? Obviously gun violence, you know, when you have someone who is shooting up a elementary school or a junior high or a college is a huge tragedy and I don't think anyone condones it. Um, I would hope not. Um, so gun violence for me is just, you know, I don't want to get shot at. I don't want my mom as a teacher to get shot at. I don't want my daughter to be shot at in her preschool. Um, gun violence is just, in my household, something that is not acceptable. To be honest, no, nah, not so much. I just know that gun violence, um, it's a bad thing, but at the same time, it's also Guns are also the thing that can stop gun violence. So you say guns are the things that can stop gun violence. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Well, um, there's been there's more than just the the stories that are like widely circulated. Exactly, um, widely circulated. There's also like the stories where uh, someone has tried to do something and a person that had a concealed carry license was able to stop it, and it's better that than 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 the number that could have been. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh no, but it's one person or that. I'm like, yeah, but what would have happened if that person wasn't there? So, Gun violence is inextricably connected to the high rate of gun ownership in this country. The violence touches all aspects of our society, including our educational institutions. Here are veteran students John Albizo and Gerardo Rodriguez speaking. How do you personally feel about gun ownership? I love it. I'm, I'm for it if you have the proper training. It's good and bad to everything, and if you're gonna own a gun, you need to know how to use it. It's not like giving someone a, a driver's license to just go in there and get one. No, they have to learn how to drive a car. Being in the military, did you ever see armed combat? Yes. Yes. So, what level of training do you think would be appropriate for people who wanted to personally own firearms? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I bought my first, I bought my own rifle when I was 18. Walked into Big Five, gave him the money, picked it up 10 days later. No safety, nothing, just background check. Good way to do it, safety class before you buy a gun. Make sure they know how to use it. 
Well, I mean, I own guns as well. Uh, I mean, it is, it's everyone's right. I mean, it's just the thing is you have to be able to do it responsibly. Just like everything else, owning a car, owning a cell phone, whatever it is, everyone has a right to, but it's just being responsible with it. The United States is by far in the lead when it comes to gun violence in the world. In an article written by the British Broadcasting Corporation, during 2016, 64% of all homicides in the United States were gun-related. While it is difficult to know exactly how many gun civilians own around the world, by every estimate, the U.S. with around 270 million is far out in front, according to the BBC. About 40% of Americans say they own a gun or live in a household with guns. The easy access to deadly weapons in America increases the overall rate of violence in everyday crimes. However, not all gun violence is criminally related. Many instances of injuries and deaths caused by guns arise from lack of knowledge when handling these weapons. Rigorous safety training should become mandatory for all gun owners across the country. Here is Keanu speaking with Gerardo. What level of safety training do you think is appropriate for gun owners? Uh, I mean, I know that when I was in, they trained us to um, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Um, don't point the weapon on the, at nothing unless you intend to fire at it. Um, and keep it on safe until you're ready to fire. You know, for us, they they constantly ran that into our heads, um, showing, hey, you know, this is how you do it, this is how you do it. And it's not that they kept us, kept us away from it, but they kept us around it. That way we know, hey, this is part of you, but at the same time, you have to know how to use it. The AR-15 assault rifle that was used in the Parkland, Florida shooting to kill 17 people recently is the most commonly used weapon amongst mass shooters across the country. The Parkland shooter was legally able to purchase this weapon with zero hours of safety training. Now, NRA supporters such as President Donald Trump are promoting arming teachers. Florida has already passed legislation attempting to arm public school teachers. Students at RCC are aware of dangers that exist here on campus. During the afternoon of February 8th, the cosmetology building on RCC's campus experienced a potential threat when a student with a prior conviction was arrested for the possession of a Glock 9mm and unlawful paraphernalia. As the building is located in the far end of campus, it makes the students there more vulnerable to threats. Some students at RCC would feel threatened with the knowledge that their teachers might be armed with guns in the future. An instructor's main focus should be to teach. They should not have to be worried about potentially shooting an armed gunman or hitting their students accidentally. Some studies have shown that even trained police officers have missed over 50% of their targets, according to the New York Times. Anthony Swafford, a former Marine turned college professor, wrote an opinion piece for the New York Times against arming teachers. The presence of a firearm is always an invitation to violence, Swafford wrote. Weapons have no place in a learning environment. Here are students Linda Butler, John Albizo, and Capri Wee Camp speaking. Is arming teachers a sound solution to the epidemic of mass shootings? No, I don't think so. No, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, because if we're teaching our children not to have guns, then having a a teacher with a gun, that, that's contradiction. So no, I, I don't agree with that. It depends. Are the teachers themselves trained? Do they know what they're doing? It's There's a lot to look at in, that, in a perspective. Arming a teacher is... It could be just as, as stupid as allowing the shooter into somewhere you know they're going to go. Um, you, they just have to have the proper training. They have to know what they're doing. Um, you don't just give a person a gun and be like, here, you're a police officer. Same thing, just proper training and education on it. In my opinion, arming teachers is a huge leap, and we are turning a blind eye to possible other solutions that haven't even been entertained at this point. Um, going back, um, you know, RCC is talking about installing those uh, locking doors. I think that's definitely a great step. Um, and there's many other steps as well. Um, you know, installing a alarm that is specifically used for an intruder or an active shooter. Um, not a fire alarm because the fire alarm is gonna basically um, 
ask all the students and faculty to exit the buildings. We don't want to exit the buildings. We want to go ahead and take cover um, and stay secure as possible. Um, so there's different things that I think um, we haven't even entertained and we're going straight to putting um, guns in teachers and staff members hands. I think it's a little bit extreme. Um, there's actually an article by Anthony Swafford. Um, he was a U.S. Marine and he's now a teacher, um, a professor actually. And he wrote an amazing article on um, the background and training that he had to do. Um, and basically went through and says, you know, while I may be, you know, the best shooter as far as, you know, professors that are out there, I don't even want a gun in my classroom because that's not my job. My job is to educate. Um, and definitely if you go back to, um, to elementary and high school and, and even junior high, these teachers are trained to basically take care of their students as far as getting them secure and getting them to safety. Um, how are they going to be doing that would be my question if they're armed with a gun and now they have two main purposes to get their kids to safety and or basically going after the intruder. Um, which do they choose? What order do they do it? Um, if they see the intruder after their kids are secured and they go after them, you know, how do they not know that there's a second person there or whatnot, you know? So I think that um, as far as arming teachers, I don't think it's a good idea. Now, if you want to have trained professional security guards that are licensed and legally able to obtain and to use a gun, um, and have them on campus and hire them on top of your staff. Um, I personally don't see an issue with that, but teachers are educators. Um, you know, when my mom entered the field, you know, 16 years ago, this was not on her mind. She never would have thought, you know, oh, I'm going to have to carry a gun into my eighth graders classroom. Um, you know, her goal was to, today I'm going to educate. Today I'm going to help these kids understand and to move them forward. And that's what I think is a, a teacher or professor's job is to educate, um, definitely to be a mentor and a counselor as well. Um, they wear many hats, um, but to have them carry guns, I think is, is a little bit premature as far as what other steps we can take. Army teachers could potentially cause more bloodshed in life-threatening situations. Safety solutions, such as locks on doors that open with student and faculty IDs, are already implemented on campuses like California State University Long Beach. RCC must start providing more effective options that actually protect students, unlike putting more weapons in classrooms. While no American states require any safety training before allowing citizens to buy guns, some students feel it is necessary to receive emergency response instruction. Here is student Capri Weekamp speaking. Do you feel that it's necessary for you and other students to be trained in safety? Um, definitely. I think that we all should know how to act in, in, in different events, in an earthquake, in a fire, um, in an intruder event. Um, you know, like I said before, we had that training when we were younger, but now we're in a different setting. Now we're in a college. Um, you know, we're adults. But even adults need training. The professors and the staff members, they receive training. Um, I believe students should receive that as well. Um, and we should be aware of what our options are and again, what to expect of our professors and what our professors are expecting of us. Safety training can only go so far in protecting students from immediate danger. In order to be truly safe and for RCC to fully live up to the California Supreme Court mandate of protecting students, the school must improve its security presence on campus. Here are students Capri Weekamp, John Albizo, and Linda Butler speaking. Do you feel adequately protected by the security that we have now? Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's that's a joke. That's why I said it. it's just me looking after myself. I'm just always aware. It's just how I am, how I was trained. Mm, no. I mean, they have the police, but um I don't think it's I don't think it's as safe as it could be or you know, with the security or whatever. So, I don't think so. I definitely see um security guards, you know, walking around. Um I definitely see a lot of parking patrol walking around and on their little scooters. Um and then occasionally, you know, you get the Riverside Police Department that is on campus. 
Um, now, whether or not, um, aside from parking patrol, um, they're here just because, um, you know, they were called out or they are, you know, specifically supposed to be on campus to keep the peace and walk the grounds and, you know, report any sus suspicious activity. Um, I don't know who's who. Um, I definitely think that, you know, we should, we should all, um, as students and faculty, know who is supposed to be there on campus um, for emergency situations, whether they all are, you know, currently, or they are going to be, they have been, the um, RCC is going to be adding um, these specific people for campus security. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure, um, you know, the communication there of informing the students, hey, you know, we have um, four people on campus at all times, you know, walking the perimeter and, you know, making sure that we are all safe as a campus. Um, that communication, I, I have no idea. I, I've never been told that we have, you know, specifically people on campus for emergency situations. Now I know we have, you know, like I said, the parking patrol for sure, because everyone's gotten a ticket or two. It's true. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I definitely know that they are there. Um, but as far as everything else, I don't know if they were called out for a dispute um, or if they're actually supposed to be there on campus specifically for our safety at all times. Gun violence in America is one of the biggest threats to our youth. Campus safety should be the highest priority of all schools. RCC needs to take more responsibility and act preemptively to prevent any and all injuries on campus, including mass shootings. The safety of our communities must be considered in any new gun reform legislation. People's right to live is more important than others' right to bear arms. A thank you to RCC students John Albiso, Linda Butler, Gerardo Rodriguez, and Capri Weekamp for participating in our podcast. A special shout out to the musician Lakey Inspired, whose songs we used in production.